The Jewish scriptures are of great authority to primarily two separate religions, Judaism and Christianity. Where the Jews have the Tanakh, the Christians accept it as the Old Testament, with the New Testament being the fulfillment of God's written revelation to man. One of the central figures of the division of Judaism and Christianity is Jesus of Nazareth, also known as Jesus Christ, or for Jewish people, Yeshua HaMashiach. The reason for this division is that Christians believe that Jesus was the prophesied Messiah to save the world from its sin and also being God manifest in the flesh. While the Jews reject the first century carpenter as a false prophet not supported by their scriptures. One of the reasons why Jews will not accept Jesus as their savior is because of the assumption that the Messiah's kingdom should have appeared at his coming in the first century, and the idea of having their savior go through a death, burial, and resurrection is outside of their comprehension. This, however, is where our Jewish friends are wrong, as the Christian scriptures are not the only source to indicate this, but also their own. Here, we'll be looking at significant verses in the Bible where the Messiah's death was prophesied as an atonement for the sins of the world. Now let's get started. One of the first utterances that the Messiah would be a sacrifice can be found in Genesis 22 when Abraham takes his son Isaac to offer him as a burnt offering at the Lord's request. When Isaac had asked his father, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? The response to his son would be that of prophecy where he says in verse 8, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. In the end, a ram was Isaac's substitute after an angel of the Lord restricted Abraham from killing his son. But perhaps this is something that could go over a few heads. But let us continue and see how this is anything else but... Although here it is not explicitly stated that this is a prophecy about the Messiah, its typology indicates a huge significance as presented by God and the sacrifices made for the atonement of sin. On the night before the Israelites left Egypt in Exodus 12, they were made to sacrifice a lamb, and as it is written in verse 7, they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses. It's detailed in verse 46 that neither shall ye break a bone thereof. What should also be considered is that whenever it refers to the lamb, it is always spoken about in a singular form. In Psalm 34 verse 20, it reads, he keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Finally, in John 19 verse 36, it reads, For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. Another clear indicator that God saw the crucifixion well in advance can be found in Psalm 22, where multiple passages that mirror Jesus' crucifixion can be seen. One of the greatest clues that this is about Jesus is in verses 16 to 18, as it reads, For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them, and cast lots upon my vesture. Just like what happened to Jesus. 
One of the greatest prophecies about the crucifixion is specifically found in Isaiah 53, where it details the pain and suffering of the Messiah for the sins of the people. One of the main verses that shows the significance of the man of sorrows is found in verses 5 to 6, where it reads, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Perhaps this is still not persuading our Jewish friends as this is a passage that is brought up repeatedly for its sheer reflection of the crucifixion. But this list is far from over. In Jeremiah 5, Israel is being rebuked for using the sacrifices as a means of covering sins without true repentance following and the priests accepting this without a qualm because of the benefits it is providing them. It is at this point when God says in verse 29, Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? This is something that was repeated earlier in the chapter in response to the idolatry, adultery, and sin Israel had committed. One should be asking, did the Lord not visit? Whose soul was avenged? And when did all of this happen? If you are a Bible-believing Christian, you already know. This prophecy is definitely more specific as it shows when the Messiah was to come. In the book of Daniel, a prophetic outline is given by the angel Gabriel, where seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the Most Holy. It details in verse 26 that, And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Cut off has two meanings in the King James Bible, rejected and killed. And yet that is exactly what happened to Jesus in the first century. As Zechariah details the end of the world in chapter 12 of his book, he writes in verse 10, as given utterance by the Holy Ghost, And I will pour upon the house of David, and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me, whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him, as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him, as one is in bitterness for his firstborn. Once again, pierced, just like in the psalm that we examined. As seen with the lamb, Jesus' blood serves as a cover for sin and death, where if one does not have it in their life, then they will receive the wages of their sin. It is apparent that God was to come in the flesh, die in the place of sinners, and to be raised again from the dead. As it is written, 
neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. Jesus came to give his life a ransom for many, but when he returns he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Accept your Messiah, House of Israel, and know the Lord as your shepherd.